What would my weekend look like without electric power? Not so good. <laughs> I would have no lights, no computer, no internet, no heating or cooling. Come to think of it, no running water, because my house is on a well, so things could get smelly pretty fast. And no coffee. And these are some of the solar panels that live on the rooftop of my house. And on average day, they make more electricity than I consume. Unfortunately, when the grid is down, they don't make any electricity at all. And uh, there's a good reason for that. The inverter, that's the device that takes direct current made by the solar panels and turns it into alternating current that's compatible with uh, my appliances and with the electric grid. Well, the inverter is designed to turn off when there's a problem with the grid, so that utility operators who get sent out to fix things don't get electrocuted. OK, I'm an engineer. I have a solution. Batteries. Batteries for when the sun is not shining. And an inverter that's designed to work off-grid. So now I'm independent, and um, I can say goodbye to my electricity provider, and I don't have to care about what happens to the big grid, right? Well, maybe not so fast. Think about what could happen after two weeks of no electric power. No food at the grocery store, no gas at the pumps because pumps run on electricity. If I get sick, maybe no drugs at the pharmacy. If I get really sick, maybe the hospital won't be able to treat me. And if this goes on for any length of time, I might start coveting my neighbor's dog. <laughs> and um, this is not science fiction. This almost, something like this almost happened in New Mexico in 2011 during the big freeze. And uh, a black sky event, so this is where a large section of the grid goes down for an extended period of time, is a real danger. This keeps a lot of people awake at night, like people at Homeland Security, for example, or utility operators. So, okay, the big grid is vulnerable. And my small survivalist grid is probably also not going to help me for very long. So maybe the solution lies somewhere in between, at the community scale. So this is a community. This is Corrales, New Mexico. This is where I live. Uh, 8,500 8, people live there in about 3,000 houses. And it's a community not unlike lots of other residential communities in the United States. This is how people in Corrales get their electricity. The distribution feeder, that's the set of blue and red lines, it taps into the transmission grid, where the little lightning is, and it delivers power to meters at people's houses. And uh, right now, a small percentage of electricity in Corrales is, is generated locally by about 100 rooftop solar installations, just like mine. That's where the little red dots are. So, if we want to make our community more resilient, we could start by adding more local generation, more solar. Solar is, is becoming cheaper and cheaper by the day, so this is happening. And while we're at it, we could also install some batteries. Batteries used to be really expensive. Now they're only moderately expensive, and they too are getting cheaper by the day, so this is also going to happen. OK, so now I have lots of solar, I have batteries, and let's say that something happens to the, the big grid. So I go to the substation and unplug my distribution grid from the transmission grid. And I go solo. My community goes solo. It's called a microgrid. Microgrid is a self-contained electrical circuit that has its own power generation and its own loads. OK, so is this going to work? 
probably not the way things are set up right now. That's because all these power generators, all these power consumers, they're all doing their own thing. Nobody talks to each other. Uh, in fact, they don't even talk the same language. A little bit like the Tower of Babel. So for example, when do I turn street lights on? When do I turn water treatment pumps on? Who gets power first, the, the Walmart, the hospital, or customers' TV sets? So one thing we have to understand about power systems is that generation has to be equal to consumption at any given time. Otherwise, the system crashes. So this is what happens right now in my hypothetical high solar distribution feeder that's connected to the grid. The orange curve is generation from a few hundred uh, solar rooftop installations. And the blue curve is consumption, power consumption, as a function of time, as a function of time of day. And obviously, they're not the same. But that's OK, because we're connected to the, to the grid, so it makes up for the difference. So when I disconnect from the grid, though, I have to make sure that the two curves end up matching. So how do I do that? Not a whole lot that I can do about the orange curve, because that's driven by where the sun is, where the clouds are, if they get in front of the sun. But what I can do is I can change the shape of the blue curve by controlling thousands of devices, like smart appliances, like batteries, like um, cars that are plugged in, electric cars that are plugged in for recharging. And these things that might belong to you and me, they might belong to local businesses, they might even belong to the utility. And a couple of other things that need to be there for all of this to work. First of all, we need communication standards so that all devices talk the same language. And the second thing that we're going to need is a microgrid controller. So this is a device that um, it's a computer that takes information from all these devices in the wilderness, what they're doing now, what they want to do in the next five minutes, next hour. And it makes some relatively complex calculations. And it dispatches their operation so that orange curve and blue curve end up looking the same. And we don't completely know how to do this, but there's a lot of science, a lot of research and development going on at universities, at national labs, and in industry. So how is this going to affect how I use electricity? Well, under normal conditions, it's not. So my smart appliance is going to do whatever it's designed to do, and it's going to work with the grid in the background. So for example, my smart thermostat is going to turn on and off the air conditioner, the compressor in the air conditioner, in coordination with hundreds of other smart thermostats like it. But it's going to make sure that the temperature that I set in the house stays to what I set it to. Great. But still, what's in it for me? Why should I care about any of this? Why should I pay attention? Why should I spend any money on this? Why don't I just keep buying cheap, reliable electric power like I've been doing for my entire life? Well, you can think about it as insurance policy. Insurance policy against something really big, really bad happening to the grid. And this is probably not a matter of if, it's more like a matter of when. And if something like this happens, we really might end up eating our neighbor's pets, or our neighbors. Um, and on top of that, we get a cleaner environment. Because these microgrids are able to absorb a whole lot more clean, renewable energy than the system the way it's uh, set up right now. So let's uh, embrace our clean electric future. Remember, insurance works better if everybody buys into it. So when we make a major purchasing decision, let's think about this. Let's think electric vehicle. Let's think smart appliance. Let's think home energy management system. Also, um, we could allow our utility companies, our local governments or regulators to upgrade the shared infrastructure that's on the ground already. It may cost us a little bit more in the electric bill at the end of the month, but upgrading the electricity grid is something that we have to do. So let's start now. Let's do it right. And um, so let's have this conversation. What information are we prepared to share? 
what, uh, who, who can turn our devices, gadgets on and off, under what conditions, under what circumstances. And um, let's listen to what other people have to say. Let's make our voices heard. It's complicated. We're going to need to pay attention. But it's going to be worth it. And it's going to be fun watching things change. And um, maybe we won't be worrying as much about waking up the next day to the breakdown of civilization. <laughs>